Hi, happy Wednesday. It's time for a wild robot reading. We're at chapter 51, The Autumn. The days were getting shorter. The air was getting crisper. And one morning, Roz walked out to find a layer of frost on the garden. Autumn had come to the island. The tree leaves, which had been green for the robot's entire life, turned yellow and orange and red. Then they let go of their branches and floated down to the ground and the forest gradually filled with the sounds of creatures scurrying through dead leaves. Tree knots were also falling, thunking onto roots and rocks and occasionally clanging off the robot. The smell of flowers faded as blossoms withered. All the rich scents and colors of the island were draining away. The animals were also changing. Furry animals were growing more fur. Feathery animals were growing more feathers. Scaly animals were starting to look for new homes. Yerp, it's cooling off, croaked one frog to another. Before long, it'll be time for sleeping. Yerp, I'd better start looking for a good hole, croaked the second frog. Have you found one yet? Nah, croaked the first frog. I'll look for a hole next week. For now, I'm going to enjoy the warm sunlight while it lasts. Yerp. Many of the island animals were already thinking about their winter hibernation. Frogs, bees, snakes, and even bears would soon disappear and spend the next few months resting out of sight. And then there were the birds. Some birds, like owls and woodpeckers, would spend the week, the winter nesting and eating the island's few remaining edibles. But the migratory birds were preparing for the long journey south to their win warm winter grounds. And among the birds destined to leave were the geese. Chapter 52, The Flock. Brightbill slowly waddled into the nest. He had a confused look on his face. Mama, the other goslings said that we have to leave the island soon, and we won't return for months and months. Is that true? That is true, said Roz. You know that geese migrate south for the winter. Will you migrate with us? said Brightbill. I cannot fly or swim, so I will spend the winter here on the island. Can I stay with you? I do not think that is a good idea. I think you should migrate with the flock. How long will the migration take? said Brightbill. Where will we fly? When will we come home? I do not know, said Roz. Let us go ask the others. And so the robot and the gosling walked around the pond to where Loudwing and her friends were chatting. Hello, everyone, said Roz. Brightbill has some questions about the flock's upcoming winter migration. And we'd be happy to answer them, said Loudwing. What would you like to know, little one? How long will the migration take, said Brightbill. Where will we fly? When will we come home? It'll take a couple of weeks to fly south, said Loudwing, depending on the weather. We'll join other flocks at a beautiful lake in the middle of a great sprawling field, said another goose. And we'll come back to the island after four or five months, said someone else, depending on the weather. As they walked back to the nest, Brightbill said to his mother, Lately, I've been feeling that strong urge to fly, not just around the pond or the island, but to go on a long flight, a journey. Those are your instincts, said the robot. All animals have instincts. They help you survive. Do you have instincts? said the gosling. I do have instincts. They help me survive also. My instincts are definitely telling me to fly south for the winter said Brightbill. I just wish you could join us. I'm going to worry about you while I'm away. Do not worry. I will be fine, said Roz. How bad could winter be?